Lebanese armed forces announced the Israeli occupation army for numerous violations of the ceasefire agreement less than 24 hours from its implementation. The government of Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni faces a second general strike summoned by the country's largest trade union on Friday. And thousands of Amazon workers are expected to protest or strike in more than 20 countries during Black Friday to press for better work working conditions and climate action from the U.S. retailer. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos. I'm from Tresor Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. And the Lebanese armed forces denounced the Israeli occupation army for numerous violations of the ceasefire agreement less than 24 hours from its implementation. The Lebanese armed forces said that on the 27th and 28th, Israeli forces violated several times the ceasefire agreement. These consisted of air raids and attacks with different weapons on the territory. On Wednesday, in the first hours of the effective date, the Zionist troops were reported by civilians against whom they fired to intimidate their return to their homes. An international press team was also attacked by occupation forces. The Lebanese army assured that it is conducting an investigation with the relevant authorities. And also Israeli occupying forces have committed three new massacres in the latest 24 hours in the Gaza Strip, claiming at least 33 lives and injuring 137 others. Palestinian authorities denounced that Israel goes on with its genocide against civilians, killing dozens of Gazan families in the latest 24 hours. The Gaza Health Ministry briefed that since October 7th of 2023, the Palestinian death toll amounted to over 44,363, while the figure of wounded surpassed 105,070 people. And meanwhile, in Brazil, the landless movement held in Sao Paulo an art meeting that featured Palestinian artists. The meeting took place within the framework of the World Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, the action that seeks to make visible the genocide perpetrated by the Israeli Zionist regime against the Palestinian population. It is important to highlight that this is not the first time that in Brazil an art meeting is held in solidarity with the Palestinian people, who since last October 7th are the victims of an escalation of the conflict with Israel. The landless movement, the MST, is an important Brazilian farmer social movement that groups around 350,000 families in its ranks and is dedicated to the struggle for the fair distribution of land. This is very important to give visibility to the Palestinian cause and the liberation process of the Palestinian people and to understand that art, culture, are tools that show that it is not about animals, about things, but about people who make art and culture. They want to be free like any other citizen of the world. And for almost two weeks, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers has been on strike against Canada Post, rallying for dismissing those in picket lines, among other concerning issues. According to the Canada Labour Code, no worker can be fired in the middle of the strike. In this regard, the union leader of over 55,000 workers assured such intimidating measure to intend to spread fear over protesters. Meanwhile, the Minister of Labour and Senior Stephen McKinnon just said that the special mediator appointed by the federal government is temporarily off duty. 
As a result, there have been hundreds of dismissals, even though the Canadian Union has not confirmed the accurate figure yet. We now move on to other topics. In Indonesia, the National Search and Rescue Agency reported that the number of people killed by floods and landslides in North Sumatra province has risen to 27. According to the entity, seven people lost their lives this week after an avalanche hit a bus in which about 20 people were traveling. The incident occurred in the district of Deli Serdang and left a thousand people injured who received at care at a local health center. So far, an alert has been issued to the population to warn them that the new incidents of this type could occur in the next few days. It is important to note that since last weekend, heavy rains in the province have caused heavy floods, leaving at least 10 fatalities in the areas of Caro and Padanglawas. And meanwhile, in southern Thailand, flooding triggered by three days of heavy rains killed one person and displaced thousands, with more days of rain forecasted. The head of the Naradiwak Province Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation, Wasang Chaitong Wenwong, reported that the floods killed one student and displaced more than 2,700 people. The official added that the prolonged rain also forced the suspension of 65 local schools. A heavy rain warning remains in effect with continuous rain forecast across 70% of the province until early December. More than 500 soldiers and volunteers have been deployed to distribute relief kits and assist in evacuating residents to safer areas. And now we have a short break coming up, but first, remember you can join us on TikTok at Tell Us of English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The government of Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni faced a second general strike summoned by the country's largest trade unions on Friday. The General Italian Confederation of Labor and the Italian Labor Union called for rallying against the 2025 general budgets. In addition, they are demanding pay raises, including pensions, rumping up funds for health, education and public services. Furthermore, protesters announced that national and international air and maritime transport will stop from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. local time on Friday. Moreover, medical services will further join the picket, in excluding the essential ones. So far, unions have prepared demonstrations all over the nation. And in other news, Chad announced its determination to break security and defense cooperation agreements with France. Through a statement, the government informed about the decision to end the cooperation agreement. However, it emphasized that the decision does not question the historical relations and friendly ties between the two nations. Chad was the last country with a military French presence in the Sahel following the withdrawal of French troops from Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. The African country's announcement comes just hours after the visit of the head of French democracy, Jean-Noël Barot. And the United States announced new sanctions against Russia. These not only threaten Russia's revenues, but also the energy security of several countries, including Turkey. Our correspondent, Yunus Sonner, has the details. The announcement came from the U.S. Treasury Department on November 21st. Among other entities, Gazprom Bank was sanctioned. The sanctions prohibit this bank from interacting with U.S. banks. 
as well as third parties with secondary sanctions. Gazprom Bank has an industrial role here in Turkey. The Russian companies established in Turkey had problems transferring capital from their country to Turkey, just like with the transfer of dividends to Russia. Apart from trade, natural gas imports are key for Turkey, explains Serif Oskin Nesimiyevli, energy policy expert. Turkey imports between 42 and 50 percent of its natural gas consumption from Russia. This implies a very large payment. Until now, out of sanctions, Gazprom Bank, which is partly owned by the company Gazprom, played a key role here, and not only for Turkey. Turkey secures its gas consumption through Turkstream. Here, payment was made through Gazprom Bank. Russia receives its payment through this entity. The Turkstream connection transports gas not only to Turkey, but from here to several European countries, including Serbia, Hungary, Italy, and Austria. Nesimi Aglu says the decision, which will come into force on December 20th, is generating reactions. It may be that the countries do not support the war in Ukraine, but with their decision moreover in winter conditions, putting them in difficult conditions, the United States has created a club of anti-United States. We see strong statements there. Before Parliament's Budget Committee, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan criticized the United States for not paying any attention to the needs of other countries. Energy Minister Alperslan Bayraktar said, if we cannot pay, we cannot receive energy. Experts see possible solutions. All parties are going to do their best to solve the problem through bilateral agreements. Russia has already demonstrated its willingness to do so. The bill will probably be paid in smaller amounts through different banks. The Turkish minister demanded an exemption from sanctions from the United States, as was the case with gas imports from Iran. At the same time, representatives of the foreign ministries and the ministries of energy, trade, treasury and the central banks of Russia and Turkey met to discuss possible solutions. A common bank can be established and more use can be made of national currencies. Open accounts or barter can also be used. In the end, Turkey buys a lot of gas and oil from Russia, but also exports diesel and refined oil to that country. In perspective, the expert says that this situation has once again underlined the importance of working on alternative payment systems to the West, as was discussed at the last BRICS summit. And thousands of Amazon workers protest or strike in more than 20 countries during Black Friday to press for better working rights and climate action from U.S. retailer. Workers and representatives from unions and workers groups joined protests against the Seattle-based company practices between Black Friday and Cyber Monday, one of the biggest shopping weekends of the year. Action is planned in big cities across the U.S., Germany, the U.K., Turkey, Canada, India, Japan, Brazil, and other countries. It is coordinated by the Make Amazon Pay campaign, which calls on Amazon to pay its workers fairly and respect their rights to join unions, pay its fair share of taxes, and commit to environmental sustainability. And meanwhile, in Australia, Parliament on Friday passed a world-first law banning the use of social media by teens under 16. The bill will make platforms such as TikTok, Facebook and Instagram liable to fines of up to 33 million U.S. dollars for systemic failures to prevent children under 16 from having accounts. The Senate passed the bill Thursday by a vote of 34 to 19. On Wednesday, the House of Representatives overwhelmingly approved the legislation with 102 votes in favor. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said that the bill supported parents concerned about their children being harmed online. Social platforms have a year to decide how to implement the ban before sanctions are imposed.
And now we have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you will be able to re-watch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Colombia, a building collapse in Barranquilla has resulted in the death of a woman and the rescue of four children from the rubble. Colombian military officials confirmed the incident which took place in a residential area of the city. Emergency response teams to locate and extract the children who were found alive amidst the debris. Authorities are now investigating the cause of the collapse, raising concerns about construction standards and safety regulations in the region. This incident underscores ongoing issues related to urban infrastructure in Colombia, where similar tragedies have occurred due to inadequate enforcement of building codes. And we stay in Colombia as the Inter-Institutional and Community Commission of the Peace Dialogue Table keeps its session holding talks between the government and the Central General Staff, the EMC, in San Vicente de Caguán. Government representatives will meet Friday with the EMC leaders of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia's People's Army, FARC-EP, in the following three blocks. Commander Jorge Suárez Briceño, Magdalena Medio Commander Gentil Duarte, and Commander Raúl Reyes Front. Meanwhile, 18 domestic and regional entities will set technical working tables with the Yari Savannas community in southern Meta to address issues such as production, education, housing, land formalization, health, gender and ethnic approaches, financing productive projects and the environment. And during a historic ceremony, Honduran Education Secretary Daniel Enriquez Ponda declared the Western Department of Copan to be free of illiteracy. The achievement of the National Illiteracy Program promoted by the government of President Xiomara Castro has taught more than 383,000 people to read and write. To date, seven departments and 252 municipalities are free of illiteracy. Honduras expects to completely end illiteracy by the first quarter of 2025. And in other news, the Nicaraguan Parliament approved on Thursday an important reform to the general law on migration and foreigners with the aim of guaranteeing the protection of national sovereignty. The legislature has also introduced amendments to the penal code in order to modernize and strengthen the nation's legal framework. Parliamentarians stressed during the session that the law aims by strengthening border controls to combat organized crime, human trafficking and smuggling, as well as terrorism and threats to the territory. These reforms will also ensure a solid legal framework for investments in the country and will expand guarantees for the protection of children and adolescents. To strengthen our legal framework, to adapt it to the new times, in order to strengthen border controls at the national level and guarantee citizen security, positioning our country as one of the safest countries in the region. And we go now to other topics. In China, a museum in Shanghai set an important milestone in its visitor numbers by registering more than one million visitors to an exhibition on ancient Egypt. Let's see. The exhibition, entitled At the Top of the Pyramid, The Civilization of Ancient Egypt, was inaugurated more than four months ago. And since then, the exhibit has maintained a strong daily attendance rate of around 8,000 people. Ticket sales have already exceeded 1.3 million. And this number is expected to continue to rise until the end of this year and could surpass the record set by a museum in the United States 
Among the main objects on display are large items such as sculptures and murals, as well as smaller ones such as tablets and writings. Así como más pequeños como tablillas y escritos. El récord anterior de una The previous record for an Egyptian exhibition was set at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York in 1978. With 1.36 million visitors, given current trends, we are on track to surpass that record. This exhibition features more than 780 works from ancient Egypt, almost all of which are being presented for the first time on the Asian continent, making it the largest exhibition of its kind to be held outside of that country. The exhibition also marks the first major collaboration between a Chinese state museum and the African nation's government to present world-class artifacts to the Chinese population who have recorded a 65% year-on-year increase in the number of Chinese visitors to Egypt. The popularity of the exhibition has been so great that it has also stimulated sales of cultural and creative products in Shanghai, from fridge magnets to scented candles, as well as other items for games that have become very attractive to young people. In addition, the exhibition has also had an impact on the city's tourism and entertainment activity, which has helped the local economic activity and its inhabitants to grow. And like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories on our website at sesorenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and also on TikTok. For Telesor English, my name is Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.